Oh. Hello. Hello and we- hello and welcome to Prince Emmanuel, all nations. I'm glad you are here. God has a special blessing for you. You have come in his presence to praise him and heaven is open to receive your praise. And in turn, God will bless you with life, health, grace, renewed faith, and he will bless you with the power of his presence. What a joy it is for us to come together, for you and all of us to come together like this. It's Sabbath in heaven, it's Sabbath on earth. And the angels, are worshiping God and we on earth have the presence of sinless angels to help us. So be blessed where you are as you worship with us today. I praise God for each of you. I praise God for another week. I thank God for watching over you. I thank God for the power of his guidance, his protection from evil, harm and danger and his, his promise of salvation. Today we want to glorify him and I pray that all that has been prepared for you will draw you closer to Christ, will help you to be a complete person in Christ, delivered, healed, and made whole, and above all, someone who will receive eternal life. Two things I want to mention right now. It is Nurse Appreciation Day. We want to appreciate nurses, your, the nurses in your home you and the nurses in your home nurses in the community nurses who work in every situation hospital or whatever their circumstance nurses who lead in the caring business represent doctors surgeons physicians and and various forms of intervention nursing homes child care may god bless nurses may god send a special protection beyond what hospitals can provide for nurses at this time of risk. May God energize and give reward and bless. May God give nurses a remarkable blessing today as we pray with nurses and for nurses and we congratulate them in the name of Jesus for the stalwart work that they are doing at this time. Then we want to thank God for every birth, every birthday celebration for the months of March and April. Birth means a whole lot and life means so much more when we have seen so many people die in this world and over 4 million million people affected by the coronavirus. Every week we know someone who passed. And so congratulations on your birthday. Congratulations to you and all who celebrate birthdays in the months of March and April. May God be special to you. May this time remind you that God has a better world for you and a better future for you. Keep your life in the hands of God. Trust God with your life. Don't worry about the bank. Don't worry about economic crisis. God is big. He has a mansion for you. And right now in this world, he has miracles. And he has economic renewal for you. Thus he has salvation. I invite you to share with me, and the whole world to share with me, the greatest promise of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes on him will not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. God wants to save you. Enjoy worshiping and glorifying God now. Amen. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. It's a blessing when we can sing praises to the Lord. And so we want you to join us this morning as we sing Higher Ground in your SDA hymnal, is 625. And we will sing all four stanzas. <laughs> Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, 
in James 4 verse 7 they draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you sing with us draw me close to you as we meditate on this song Help me. 
Happy Sabbath. We are glad you're here with us today. Thank you, Sister Veronica, Sister Tokora, and Brother Gillis for the beautiful and encouraging music every week. May God bless you. Our scripture reading is taken from Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 1 to 6. I will be reading from in James Version. Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 1 to 6, and it reads, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the porter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my word. Then I went down to the porter's house, and there he was making something at the window, and the vessel that he made of clay was made in the hand of the porter. So he made it again into another vessel, as it seemed good for the porter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you? As this porter, says the Lord, look, as the clay is in the porter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. May the Lord bless the reading in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It is time for prayer, and I believe. We all have thanksgivings. We all have concern and prayer requests. So let us approach the throne of God as it is written in the book of Hebrew 4 16 with confidence so we can receive mercy and find grace, especially in times like this. Let us pray. Our most gracious Father in heaven, dear Lord, your children have assembled in your presence through this medium to worship and praise your holy name. Father in heaven, we just thank you, we praise you, and we adore you, Father, that you have always been there for us, dear Lord, because you are all knowing, Lord. You are all everywhere we are. It doesn't matter omnipresent. You are omniscience, perfect knowledge. You are a gracious Lord, a God of love, and a holy God. We thank God for who you are to us. Father, at this time, we humbly come to you as sinful as we are to ask for your blessings, to ask for your forgiveness of sins, to ask their Lord that you look on your son, Jesus Christ, at the Calvary, where he shedded his blood because he wants us to be close to you. We thank you, Lord. Most gracious Father, we thank you for all you have been doing in our life. And especially at this time with the pandemic, we thank you for all the frontliners that have been there for us, trying to do all they can to make sure that those that have 
gotten this disease are taken good care of. And also to help prevent the spread of the disease. Father, we also thank you for all humans, all of us to all together that have been trying to do our little best in our homes and wherever we find ourselves in our community. Even with men wearing the mask so that we can control the spread of this disease. Father, there is nothing that you cannot do. This disease or this pandemic is not a good thing you have done in the past. By your word, O oh Lord, this word was created. When Jesus was on this earth, he did miracles. And the miracles he did then, we still know that can be done at this time, dear Lord. Your children are asking and praying that, Lord, you come to our aid. Please come to our aid. Because when we see and hear what is going on, we know that we are not capable of doing anything by ourselves. We hear people saying that we are at war and we don't even have the weapons. Dear Lord, you are all that we need at this time. You are all we ask for at this time. Please hear your children, Father. Father, we pray for families. We pray for families and our friends. We pray for our children and grandchildren. We pray, dear Lord, that you continue to protect and to guide us. We pray that you continue to provide for our needs. We pray that even those diseases that are not from the pandemic that some of us are carrying, that you will heal completely, dear Lord. Father, please, each one of us, as prayer requests, and you know them. I ask in the name of your son that you bless each one and meet their needs, dear Lord, at this time. We pray, dear Lord, that our hearts will grow towards you than away from you because of things around us. Help us in our work of faith so that we'll be stronger every day. Gracious Father in heaven, we pray for leadership in our different countries that are battling what is going on around the world. We pray, dear Lord, not just for the government, we pray for leadership in our communities, leadership in our homes and communities, that we will all, through what is going on now, really come together as a unity as in unity, to do the things that are right, because we know that Christ is coming soon. Thank you for the forecasting hope that has been going on. Thank you for the efforts that these churches are making to keep the church family together so that we don't lose our faith, so that we don't go astray. Thank God for all the things that you have been doing to keep us in position there, Lord. If any of us has fallen off the wagon, please help us to get back in the wagon. Thank you, Lord, because we know that with you, all things are possible. At this time, dear Lord, we pray for all those that have businesses, especially businesses that have to do with care. You want care like the livings and then the nursing homes that we have seniors in them. Most of them are drying off easily, so easy at this time because of this coronavirus. I ask dear Lord that you protect those that are still here, that you protect those businesses, so oh Lord, and dear Lord, that you shield the caregivers and the and also the presidents in all these homes. There are other businesses that are affected by this, oh Lord, I ask that you provide for them. Some are closed and some are still in, in session. 
and Lord, I ask that you provide for your children. For those that lost their job because of the pandemic, I ask that you provide a way that they can sustain their families. For our friends that have been exposed to this virus, Father, please, if they have really caught it, we ask that you heal them. And if they haven't, please continue to protect all of us. Father, we pray for Pastor Boyd that is going to break the bread of life for us today. Father, we pray that you anoint him from his hair to his toe. And all the words yes. that you have said to him, O oh Lord, we bring joy and peace to our hearts. And we bring praises to your name. We thank you for him. May we learn something from his speech today, dear Lord, that will help us to be a blessing to others. Father, we also present our pastor, Pastor Hutchinson, that has been trying his best to keep us engaged and to encourage us as a family. We ask for your blessing on him and his family. Father, if there is anything I have forgotten to bring forth to you this morning, you know our hearts, you know our needs. We ask that you bring them there, Lord. Father, help us to be ready every day because we know your coming is soon. Help us to be ready so that when Christ comes in the clouds of heaven, we will say, this is our Lord we have been waiting for. Lord, help us to attain that goal because that is all our goal at this time. To be able to be ready, to be ready for the second coming. So we will be with you where there will be no more grieving, no more tears, but everlasting life in joy and peace with you. All this we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 of the Bible, Noah and the Flood. This is Noah. Hey. Noah was a good man who tried to do the right thing. Yeah. But in the time when Noah lived, he was the only man on earth who was doing the right thing. All the other people on earth were doing evil things and hurting each other. This made God very sad. So God said that he was going to send a flood to the earth that would destroy every living thing on earth because he was sorry he ever made them. But God decided to save Noah and his family. God told Noah to build a boat and fill it with two of every kind of animal and bird. Colors, birds, moth, okay, all here. Noah did just that. And then Noah and his whole family boarded the boat and waited for the flood to come. The rain fell hard for 40 days and 40 nights. Water! Water covered the whole earth, and the boat floated safely on the surface. Water covered even the highest mountains on earth, but Noah and his family were saved. God remembered Noah and all the animals on the boat. God sent a wind to blow across the earth, and the flood began to go away. After five months, the boat came to rest on a mountaintop. A few months later, the other mountains could be seen. 
Forty days later, Noah opened a window and released the raven. The bird flew back and forth until the flood had dried up. He also sent a dove out to see if it could find dry ground. But the dove couldn't find a place to land because there was still water on the ground. So the dove returned to the boat. Oh, hello again. After another seven days, Noah sent the dove out again. This time, it came back with an olive leaf. Oh, let go. So Noah knew that the flood waters were almost gone. A week later, he sent the dove out again, and it didn't come back. So many months after the flood began, Noah opened the covering of the boat and saw that the ground was dry. He waited two more months, and at last, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, Leave the boat, all of you. Release the animals so they can be fruitful and multiply throughout the earth. Okay. So Noah, his family, and all the animals finally left the boat. See ya! Noah built an altar to the Lord to make a sacrifice to God. God was pleased with Noah's offering and said to himself that he would never again destroy every living thing on earth. God blessed Noah and his sons and promised them that he would never send another flood. He gave them the rainbow in the sky as a sign of this promise to Noah, his family, and all of mankind. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath. We want to welcome you once again to our virtual worship. We're always glad to have you. I want to take this opportunity to remind you of a program that has been running for two weeks now called Forecasting Hope. We all know that we need hope, especially in times like these. These are Bible presentations about prophecies. And I, I, th I thank those of you who have been connecting and I pray that your hearts have been blessed. If you have not done so as yet, I have an exciting news for you. It has now been extended for two more weeks. So you have opportunity to connect and to invite loved ones to do so. How do I connect, you ask? Well, I'll guide you. You will need to go to a website called forecastinghope.org forecastinghope.org. When you get there, it will prompt you to register. You will see where it says register now. When you click on that, you register. When the time comes, it's usually seven o'clock, you go and you click on watch now and you will be able to enjoy the presentations. So we look forward to seeing you. It is now time for giving. And I just want to take this opportunity to thank everyone that has been contributing to the work of the Lord. We know that the work of the Lord has to go on. And for those who may not have been able to do so as yet, and I'm, I'm wondering how to do that, I will guide you now. The easiest way to do that would be to go to the church's website, which is peasthechurch.org, -E and it will bring you to this screen where you can click, where you will need to click on the button, the orange button that says donate. Once you click on that button, it will take you to our, to our web, website called Adventist Giving. When you get there, you will need to create a login for yourself by clicking on login. And then enter your email address, create a password, click on sign up. It will then prompt you for more information. When you feel 
the all the necessary information you will then need to go back to the envelope and indicate the amount for tithe the amount for local budget and any other category that you want to give and then you follow the prompts to complete your giving at some point it's going to ask you to provide your payment information you will either do that by connecting it to your bank account or to your debit account when you finish follow the prompt until you get to confirm it's critical that you do that because that registers your giving if you are not able to give through Adventist giving there are, there's another option you can write a check to the church the check should be written to P E A N S D A Church or Prince Emmanuel Seventh Day Adventist Church. When you finish doing that, you will need to mail it to our address 2701 Enterprise Road, Bowie, and the zip code is 20721. Again, we want to thank you, and I just want to I'll share a Bible text with you as I close. And that is from 2 Corinthians 8, verses 4 to 5. 2 Corinthians 8, verses 4 to 5. And it reads, Imploring us with much urgency that we would receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And by but they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. This is Paul speaking, talking about the kindness and the giving of the people of old. They did not only give as was expected, they went beyond the, what they expected and implored them to accept the gifts for the Lord's work and also for their upkeep as the apostles of God. When you start giving, it's like an exercise. The Lord impresses upon your heart to give more and you find yourself giving even more. The Lord appreciates all that you give and he will do great things with it. So please continue to give and may the Lord bless us as we continue to support his work. Shall we pray? Our dear kind and loving Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you that we're alive to see this day. It's not because we're better than those who are gone. We're here simply because of your grace. And we want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to contribute to your work through giving. We pray, O oh Lord, that you please accept our little gifts. Bless those who have given. Those who have not been able to give, bless them too, O oh Lord, and provide for us all so that we will continue to support your word. Bless the rest of our service, and may it bring honor and glory to your name, now and always, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. The health spotlight today is on temperance. Uh, as Christians, and more especially as Seventh-day Adventists, we are to be temperate in all that we do. Galatians 5.23 included self-control as part of the fruit of the Spirit. And 1 Corinthians 10.31 say, um so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do do all to the glory of god Amen. we have eight doctors natural doctors of which we are going to use today to uh elaborate on temperance next slide the doctor of medicine says let food let your let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food 
Next slide. Um, food is what nourishes our physical body as we know. And our plate should usually be cons consist of regulators, energetics, and constructors. And the regulators are the things that regulate all the systems in the body. And these give us phytochemicals, anti um, antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals. And they are found in your fruits, leafy greens, and other vegetables. The energetics give us energy and they provide calories. And this can be found in carbohydrates, sugars, and fats. In your breakfast should be very strong, strong breakfast consisting of one to three of the regulators and one to two of the energetics and also one to um next slide slide please next slide and one to uh two of the constructions also our lunch should be medium not as strong as breakfast it should consist of one to three uh reg regulators one or two construction constructors and one of energetics dinner should be very light consisting of one to three regulators one to two energetics and no constructors at all so we have to uh if we eat too much we are going to uh develop cancer and also cardiovascular diseases so moderation in things that are good for us is what uh, we're talking about here and if you eat too little that also will give us what we call marasmus that is we will not develop as we ought to next slide and next slide please Next slide, exercise. Exercise causes, uh, excessive exercise causes cancer and too much exercise can suppress our immune system. Our body is made for motion. When God created Adam and Eve, he put them in the garden to tend the garden. Our exercise should be enjoyable it should be free of strain and pain. And it should use most of our joints, muscles, and be uh, a variety that will make us to be able to deep, breathe deeply and take in fresh air. For exercise to be effective, it has to be about 30 to 45 minutes, five days a week. Brisk walking, jogging, weightlifting, gardening, playing basketball, and all of that. Exercise improves our mood and decreases feeling of depression, anxiety, and stress. It helps us to build our muscles, therefore aiding in weight loss. It also helps us to digest our food quickly and use more calories. It helps to bring build strong bones so that we can prevent osteoporosis it increases our energy level maintain healthy body reduce risk of cardiovascular diseases and improves blood circulation to all vital organs especially the brain and it protects our mental function and as we say too much exercise can damage our arteries our blood vessels and our heart and it can lead to injury and we can be addicted to it as such the next one is water next slide the most precious of all liquids the earth consists of 70 to 75 percent water 
and so is our human body. We use water for washing, for bathing, and for drinking. Generally, the recommendation is eight to 10 glasses a day per, for adults. That is about 30 cc per two pounds of your body weight. Those who eat their recommended uh, fruit and servings of fruit and vegetables might not need up to eight to 10 cups. Why? Because these fruit and vegetables contain at least 70% water. So drink 30 minutes before your food or one hour after food and never drink cold drink with your food because it uh, hinders your digestion. Avoid cold drinks, which uh, hinders arrest digestion. Too little water will cause dehydration, constipation, overly acidic uh, stomach, heartburn, stomach ulcers. Blood can also become thicker, making you have high blood pressure. You have decreased urination, fatigue, headache, weakened immunity, and poor skin health like dry skin and chapped lips and persistent bad breath. And if you drink too much, we get water intoxication and you have low sodium in your bloodstream, which can lead to seizure, coma, and even death. Do not drink any more than your kidney can handle in a day. The kidney can handle about five to seven gallons a healthy or an unhealthy person. That is an average of one gallon per hour. Never drink more than that. So next, uh, water, too much water, like I said, lead to that. The next one is sunlight. All life on, a, on earth depends on energy of the sun. Sunlight heals and disinfects the atmosphere. Exposure to sunlight increases the brain's release of the hormone serotonin, which is associated with boosting our mood and helping a person feel calm and focused. Exposure, exposing our skin to the rays of the sun helps to create vitamin D that is necessary for strong bone health. Too much of the sun, too little of the sun will uh, mean vitamin D deficiency, rickets in children and osteoporosis in adults. And too much of, this, of exposure to the sun can cause sunburn and skin cancer. Next slide. Air or temperance. We are... <clears throat> Yes, go back. Thank you. Temperance. Temperance, therefore, is moderation in all things that are good for us and abstinence from, uh, abstaining from those things that are bad for us, like drug, alcohol, tobacco, overeating, just to name a few. And the next is air, the air that we breathe in. Next slide, please. The air is the most important nutrient and one of God-ordained doctors. The atmosphere is made up of 70, 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and a small amount of argon, carbon dioxide, helium, and neon. Productive life as we know it cannot exist beyond five minutes without oxygen. And oxygen is a life-sustaining part of air. We breathe in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide and the plants around us do the opposite. So taking a walk outside in the open assures us of breathing in fresh air that the body needs to make pure blood. Fresh air aids in digestion, improves our heart rate and blood pressure and cleans the lungs, strengthens the immune system and fresh air the amount uh, increases the amount of serotonin production in the body, which promotes emotional well-being. And if we don't have enough of fresh air, we are not going to get those advantages. 
rest next please rest or sleep god designed for us to rest when he created us that's why he created night and day he expressed uh, expected us to have a daily rest as well as a weekly rest dr martin moore said if we operate machinery the way we now are op uh, operating the human body we will be accused of reckless endangerment most of us walk, 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 and we don't take time to rest. Melatonin, the natural sleep-inducing hormone production, starts at 9 p.m. and stops at 7.30. And we want to take advantage of that, you know, by sleeping early and making sure we had a good night's sleep. We want to have as much melatonin production as possible. And this is only produced in the dark. Melatonin helps us during jet lag. In some children with sleep disorders, it helps them. It helps us in anxiety before and after surgery. It also uh, helps the restoration and healing to vital organs, the nerves and the body tissues. All this takes place when we sleep at night. How much is enough? Newborn need 16 to 20, 20 hours of sleep. Young children need 10 to 12 hours of sleep and adults need seven to nine hours of sleep. When we don't sleep, we do not get all those advantages. Actually too little sleep or too much sleep can shorten our lifespan. Next, trust. Trust is particularly important. It determines the quality of our daily rest, our weekly rest, and our recreation. Trust is so necessary for our present welfare as well as our eternal welfare. Trust in self will impact the way of our daily rest and weekly rest, and also our recreation negatively. But when we trust God, that will impact the way of our daily rest, weekly rest, and recreation positively. And it will remove anxiety and restlessness. Anxiety breaks down health, according to the Ministry of Healing. It is generally harmful to us, according to Adventist Home, and it means borrowing trouble when we get anxious all the time. Cannot remedy is an anxiety cannot remedy a single evil. So don't worry. That's what the Bible tells us. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace. And to, to finish this, we should have an attitude of gratitude. Therefore, whether therefore you eat or drink, and whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Gratitude is the vitamin of the soul. May the Lord help us so that we can be temperate in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God has been so good to us, and he is concerned about us. Amen. God is just a prayer way.
concern about you. We thank God for that message in music, Sister Bird. And we're going to go and look at the book of Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah chapter 18 would be our scripture for this morning. I've been asked to speak on this subject. And in Jeremiah 18, the Bible says, beginning with verse 1, beginning with verse 1, it says, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Look, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. Our message today the Father wants to put you back together again in the potter's house. Let us pray. Father, we ask for more of your Holy Spirit. Bless us now, God. Give us more of your grace and understanding and draw us closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In chapter 18, as we just read for our scripture today, we see that God is talking to Pastor Jeremiah. He's having a conversation with Pastor Jeremiah. And we know that Jeremiah is the pastor because in verse 16, in verse 16 of chapter 17, if you take a left and go back just one, 
you see in chapter 17 and verse 16, Jeremiah is called the pastor. He says, as for me, I have not hurried away from being a shepherd, which says a pastor who follows you. And the King James Version says, I have not hastened from being a pastor to follow you. And so here we see that the Bible does call Jeremiah a pastor. He is the shepherd of the church. He is the pastor. And God is having this conversation with Jeremiah about the condition of the church and the condition of the people. And he's having this conversation with Jeremiah because Jeremiah is saying, Lord, regardless of how they have treated me and of all the things that they have done to me, I have not stopped being their pastor. I'm still their pastor. They've mistreated me. They've talked about me. And in chapter 18, we find out that they threw Jeremiah in a dungeon. They locked him up. They didn't want to hear what he had to say. And Jeremiah has been so mistreated. But he says that with all of the mistreatment and with all of the hard times I've had, I have not stopped being their pastor. Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet. And the reason why he was called the weeping prophet is because so much happened to Jeremiah that would make him cry at night. He would cry about his heart being burdened. He would cry because of how they treated him. It would bring tears to his eyes at the condition that the church was in and how they responded to God and how they responded to him. He was known as a man of sorrow, a weeping, a crying prophet. And everybody else was out partying and having fun and dancing and listening to music. Jeremiah was home on his knees crying out to God because of the situation and the circumstances that he was in. He was called the weeping prophet. When he looked at his church and saw the condition of his church, it made him weep at night. And he said, even regardless of all of that, I still remain their pastor. I still love them. I still ministered unto them. They couldn't do enough to make me stop loving them and make me turn away from them. Let's look at the condition of the church and the condition of the people. Look at, look at verse five. Notice with Jeremiah, he said in verse five, thus saith the Lord, curse be the man that trusteth in man and make his flesh his arm and whose, de whose heart departed from the Lord. <coughs> Jeremiah said that they had gotten to the point where they started trusting in man more than they was trusting in God. And it, it, it hurt him to his heart when he saw that God was being so good to these people. God was showing his love to them. And they had more trust in a person than they had in God. It was just like the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt and God opened up the Red Sea and the Bible said they walked across on dry ground. How in the world can you walk on dry ground when the water has been on the dry ground? How can you lift water off of sand and the sand not be wet? But the Bible said that when God opened up the Red Sea, he sent the wind and it blew and it had to make the ground dry because the chariots had to go through and the horses and the people and the old men and the old women had to go through that dry ground. It had to be dry because God had to perform a miracle. And when God has to do something for you, he will do the most miraculous thing that it takes to get the job done. And Jeremiah saw that out of all the good things that God had done for them, why would they trust in a person more than they trust in God? It made him weep at night that they began to trust men and women more than they trust in God. But he said, out of all of that, I'm preaching to them every day. I'm ministering my heart out to them. I'm telling them about the goodness of God and the power of God. And they still can't trust God. What does God have to do to get us to trust in him? Will coronavirus get us to the point where we begin to trust God more than we trust a person? And so it got to the point 
where the men, they began to trust men and trust one another more than they trust in God. And Jeremiah said, that did not stop me from loving them. I still love them. And then he goes on in verse nine. Look at another situation, how he talks about the condition of the church and the condition of the people. He said in verse nine, the heart, the heart of the people is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Jeremiah said that even though he realized that these people had a heart that was so deceitful and that was so desperately wicked, he still pastored them. He still ministered to them. He still loved them with the love that could not broken. He loved them. He said, God, out of all of this, they're not trusting you. They don't even trust me. There's no trust in the land. There's no trust in the church. Church folk don't trust one another. People in the community can trust one another. And we're like that today. When you walk down the streets, even as I walk down the streets, I can have on a suit or I can have on a t-shirt and jeans. And when I walk by cars, doors start clicking and doors start locking. And wearing a mask, me wearing a mask has made more people scared than when I did not wear a mask. There's more scared now with a mask on than when I had a suit on. And the world is like that. We don't trust one another anymore. That's why so many hearts are broken because people have let one another down and they did it during the days of Jeremiah. They did not trust, mother did not trust the husbands. Fathers did not trust the children. Children did not trust the parents. Neighbors did not trust one another. Friends stopped trusting each other. The trust was gone. The heart was wicked and desperately wicked but it did not stop Jeremiah from loving them, from pastoring them, from ministering to them and telling them about the goodness and the grace and the love of God. And then Jeremiah says, he goes on, he says in verse 14, another condition of the church in verse 14, he says, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me and I shall be saved. For thou art my praise. Jeremiah said, the church and the condition of the people, they need to be healed. They are sick. They are infected. They are afflicted. There needs to be a hit in the land. And he says, Lord God, heal the land. Heal the church. The church is sick. The church is infected. The church is afflicted. The church need to be healed and the church need to be saved. Jeremiah looked at it and he said, oh, this is a church that is suffering from sicknesses and disease and affliction. And we are in the same situation today. There are church members that are dying from coronavirus. There are preachers that are dying from coronavirus. There are Christians that are dying from coronavirus. The disease is in the land. We cannot go certain places because the disease is there. And there are so many people who love God and need to be healed. And Jeremiah saw it. He saw that those who love God and care so much about God were dying of sickness. They need to be healed, they need to be saved. How is it they can be in a church and hear his messages and hear his preaching and hear his teaching and not be saved? How can they sit up under his preaching such power? and anointing and Holy Ghost and Spirit and still don't give their lives to Jesus. It made him a weeping prophet. And he said, not only does there need to be a healing in the land, not only does the church need to be healed, but he said, Lord, Lord, please heal me. He said, I need to be healed. Preachers need to be healed. I need to be saved. Lord, don't let what I see happening in the world cause me to be lost. Lord, don't let me as a pastor, God, if I preach to them and then I end up being lost. Lord, if you're going to save anybody, Jeremiah said, Lord, God, save me. It's not my mother. 
It's not my father. It's not my sister. It's not my brother. But Lord, it's me. It's me, oh Lord. I need to be saved. I need healed. I need to be touched by the power and the hand of God. Jeremiah said, God, I am their pastor, but I need healing. I need healing just like they do. The shepherd need to be healed just like the sheep. And in 2020, we have that happening today. There are preachers that are preaching, but they need to be healed. There are preachers that are ministers, but they need to be healed. There are pastors that are pastoring and they themselves need to be healed. They're laying hands on the sick and they need to be healed. They're ministering to the afflicted and they need to be healed. There needs to be a healing in the land in 2020. Look around us. People are dying. Coronavirus cases are multiplying. There needs to be a healing. Bishops are dying. Preachers are dying. Pastors are dying. Elders are dying. Missionaries are dying. Members are dying. Those that don't know God are dying. Everybody needs to be healed. And that's what Jeremiah said. He said, Lord, he said, Lord, heal me. Why, Jeremiah? Because Jeremiah said, I have been attacked. And there are preachers today that have been attacked by the bears of burden and attack. And they dealing with the coyotes of circumstances. There are preachers and pastors today that are dealing with the dogs of depression. There are pastors today like Jeremiah that need healing from the elephants. There are pastors today that need healing in the land from the leaping frogs of fear and failure. There are ministers today, just like the members of the church, that need to be healed from the gorillas of greed and gain. There are members of the day, just like the pastors that need healing from the lions of lust. There are members of the day, just like the pastors that need healing from the monkeys of ministry for money. There are ministers to be hampers of PSD. There are preachers that are preaching with power under pressure. They are preaching and calling members during the daytime and crying out to God at nighttime. They need healing. There are ministers and preachers and pastors today that are helping the needy at daytime and having nightmares at nighttime. Jeremiah said, Lord, it's not just the church that need healing, but I need healing. We need healing in the land. Everybody needs to be healed. And Jeremiah said, when I looked at the condition of the church, I did not let none of that, none of that stop me from being their pastor. And when God saw that Jeremiah was willing to have a conversation like this with him, that Jeremiah was willing, after all that he's going through, he was willing to still be their pastor, to hold on and not let go, to stay in there and take a, a ticking and keep on ticking, a licking and keep on ticking. He saw that Jeremiah was willing to be steadfast. He said, well, then, Jeremiah, if you're willing to go through it, if you're willing to take it, if you're willing to be strong and endure hardship, then this is what I'm going to do. He says in verse 25 of chapter in verse 26, he says, I'm going to do something evangelistic, Jeremiah. If you can work with the ones that I've given you, if you can love that church and the ones that I've given you, I'm going to give you more people. He says, I'm going to allow princes and kings to come from everywhere and sit around the throne of David. I'm going to allow princes and kings to come riding on chariots and they're gonna be men of Judah from Jerusalem and from everywhere. And they're gonna stay in that church. They're gonna remain forever because you will not let them go. He said, Jeremiah, if you were to do that, I will start an evangelistic campaign. I will bring in ministers, I will bring in people. And where are you gonna bring them, Lord? He says in verse 26, I'm gonna bring them into the church. They're gonna come in offering burnt offerings and sacrifices, burning incense, and they're gonna offer up sacrifices of praise to the house of the Lord. 
Jeremiah said, okay, well, God, if you're willing to bring them in and you're going to bring them to the church, then I'm going to continue to pastor them. I'm going to continue to be their pastor. If you're willing to do that, I will continue to minister to them. And then the Bible says something else happened that really strange that took Jeremiah, took him by surprise in chapter 18. The very next verse, chapter 18, the Bible says, beginning with verse 1, verse 1 through 6 that we just read, it says, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, arise and go down to the potter's house. And there I will cause you to hear my words. Jeremiah said, Lord, I thought we were going to bring the people into the church house. I thought you were going to bring them into the house of God. You said they're going to come riding in chariots. They're going to come from the south, from everywhere, from the mountains, and from everywhere. And they're going to come inside the church. And they're going to be offering up sacrifices of praise. And now you're telling me that you want to move from the church house, from your house, to the potter's house. Jeremiah began to understand this one thing about God. You cannot box God in. You cannot confine God. You cannot tell God he can only operate and bless you only one God, one way. God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. He can go anywhere and he will bless you in the church and he will bless you in the church house and he will bless you in your house. And so God is doing something that's happening in 2020 today. He tells Jeremiah to go to the house of the potter and we're going to have church. He goes to the house of the potter. He moves from the church house to the potter's house and he's doing it today. Jeremiah thought that when he heard God say, when you go to the potter's house, you're going to hear my word. Jeremiah thought when he gets to the potter's house you're just gonna, he's just going to hear a sermon. But the Bible says that when Jeremiah got there, he found out that not only did he hear a sermon, but the Bible said the first words came out of his mouth was, Behold, look, he saw how God was working on the potter in his house. He saw that God was not only wanting him to hear a sermon, but God wanted him to zoom in and see a sermon. God is doing that today in 2020. He has moved from the church houses and now he's in our houses. He is not only allowing us to hear the word, but he has fixed it where you can zoom in. You can tune it in. You can Facebook it in. You can see a sermon. It is said that a sermon is heard better when it is seen. And so God has fixed it. Well, the sermons today, like he was trying to get Jeremiah to see, that he will move from the church house into your house. Why is it that God is interested in the church house, in our house? Why is it that God will go out of his way to come to our house. Where's the reason why? You see, the reason why, I'm giving you two reasons, maybe three. One of the reasons why is because, see, a lot of time, a lot of time, when we go to the church house, we forget about what's happening at our house. And when we go to the church house, we praise and we give God glory and we show love to people. And then when we go home, we won't praise him. We don't show love to one another and we don't give God thanks for what he's done. So God said, I got to fix this. I got to turn this thing around. I'm going to have it where 
you're not going to spend so much time in my church and so little time in my church and showing so much love and then go home and spend more time at home and then show little love. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to have them spend more time at home so they can show more love at home. I'm going to change it. I'm going to go to their homes. I'm going to go inside their houses because it's got we've gotten to the point that the moment something happened, we want to run to the church and pray and call on the name of the Lord. We want to run to the church when somebody need prayer and somebody need healing. We want to take them to the church when somebody want to heal, need a word. Uh, we want to take them to the church, but God said, I'm going to change it. I'm going to let them be right there in their homes and they're going to hear a word in the homes. And Jeremiah got there and he saw that the word of God came into the homes. And in 2020, he's doing that today. He's coming into our homes. He's fixing it. Well, we will pray at our homes. Some people, not all, but some people before the coronavirus came, they would not even hear a sermon unless they went to the church. But God has fixed it. Well, now they can't go to the church and the sermon is in their home. Some people, the only time they listen to Christian music is when they come to the church. But God has fixed it. Well, now it's coming into the home. Some people fuss and fight all day and night long and they don't get it right before the sun go down and they go to church and praise it off and run around and jump it off and clap it off. But God said, I'm going to fix that. I'm going to change that. I'm going to fix it. Well, now, when stuff start happening at home, you can't run anywhere. You can't run from it. You can't escape from it. you got to deal with it. And you got to say, come, let us reason together. Let's pray and pray this thing out and ask God to forgive one another and heal us in this house. And so God has fixed it. Well, now he's coming into our homes. He's bringing the message in our homes into the house of God. See, God has always been interested into our homes. He's always been interested into the house that man has to dwell in. And the reason why is because, see, the first death took place in Adam and Eve's home. The Garden of Eden was the home of Adam and Eve. And when Adam and Eve sinned, the sin took place in their homes. And when they sinned in their homes, what God did, he came down in their home. He didn't come and visit them when they were outside of the Garden of Eden. He came inside their homes. The first lie took place in the home of Adam and Eve. And God is coming into our homes. Too much lying going on. It's too much dying going on. You know how many people are not dealing with death that takes place in the home? They're not dealing with grief. They're not dealing with the grieving that has happened in the home. And some people are blaming God for the death that has taken place. God has to go and deal with it so we can deal with the death, so we can deal with the dying in the home. It's easy to run away and not deal with it, but God is having us to confront death before you leave and go and spend so much time in church house. We need to get our own house in order. We need to get it right with God because tomorrow is not promised. So God saying he is interested in our homes. Why? Because Satan came into the home of Adam and Eve. And so God has always been interested in our homes because he knows that deception started in the home, that sin took place in the home. And when the sin came in the home, the Bible says that when sin entered into the world, it was everywhere. And so Adam and Eve brought sin into the world. 
And when sin came into the world, coronavirus came into the world. Sicknesses came into the world. Plagues came into the world. Viruses came into the world. Adam and Eve brought that virus into the home, into the garden. And brothers and sisters, in 2020 of this month right here, beginning with May, what we got to do when we leave our homes, we need to make sure that God is with us so that when we come back into our homes, we're not bringing the coronavirus into our homes. We need Jesus to walk with us. We need Jesus to cover us. We need Jesus to be a fence all around us so that when we come back into our homes, we're not bringing like Adam and Eve did the sickness and the sin and the virus that is deadly into the home. We need goodness and mercy to follow us wherever we go. And so that's why God has been interested in our homes. And the Bible says that when Adam, when Jeremiah got there, in Jeremiah chapter 18, it says when he got there, what Jeremiah saw was the potter working from the home. And he saw that God wanted to bless people that are willing to work from their home. And I come to tell you, if you're working from your home and you let Jesus in, he will bless you from home. You may not be able to go anywhere, but God wants to bless us from home. He realized of all times that this potter is not someone insignificant. He realized that God has taken his potter and God has made this a significant working worker, working from home, he realized that this is essential right now that God is trying to tell him that he's working. And he said he noticed that the, the worker, that the potter was being filled. The spirit was over the potter. And if you let Jesus in your home, he will come in your home and he will fill you. He will cover you with his spirit. Jesus wants to come into our homes and he wants to bless the owner of the home like he did the potter. He wants to bless every room in the house. He wants to bless every child in the family. He wants to bless from the living room to the back room, from the bathroom to the front room. He wants to bless everybody in that house. He said, behold, I stand at the door and I'm knocking. If you let me in, I come into your home and I bless you while you're working at home. And so Jeremiah saw that. And not only did he see that, that God was blessing. But he also saw that God was using the potter. He was using the potter. And God will use people to bless us. He will use people to help us. Jeremiah saw that God was used to sending him to be a blessing to people. But now God is sending people to be a blessing to him. God will use people to help you. Whatever you need in life, God has people out there that he will use to be a blessing to you. You may not understand it. You may not be able to figure it out, but God has a way of using people to bless you more than you could imagine. Let him bless you. Let him in your house. Let him in your heart. Let him go with you. And he will use people to be a blessing to you. And then Jeremiah saw. He saw that the potter had clay and that the potter had made this clay into one type of vessel. And then the vessel was marred. And then the potter made it over again. And God spoke to Jeremiah. He said, Jeremiah, just like you love that church that mistreats you so much, just like you were willing to stay in there and minister and pastor to them and love them, and you did not stop loving them, Jeremiah, that's how I feel about people also and how I feel about a nation. I feel this way, Jeremiah, about a country. I feel this way about a city, about a state, about a nation as a whole. He says, Jeremiah, 
I am this way when it comes to people. He says in verse in verse seven, he said, what is what instant? If I speak concerning a nation, Jeremiah, if I decide I'm going to pluck it up and destroy it, that's how that's when he get when the potter was made and the potter messed up the clay. He said, if I decide I'm going to destroy it, if that nation in verse eight, if that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I have done unto them. In other words, he said, Jeremiah. He says, Jeremiah. If a nation as wicked as they are, who do not trust me, whose heart is desperately wicked. If that nation, Jeremiah, would turn from their wicked ways and honor me, I will bless that country, Jeremiah. If God bless America, it's going to be because not just the people in America, but the Bible said in Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14, he says, if my people that are called by my name, if they would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Then will I forgive their sins and I will heal the land. He didn't say if the president of the country, he didn't say if the president of a nation, he didn't say if the rulers from Europe and from Italy to China and Russia, he didn't say if they did, the leaders of the country would pray. He said, if my people that are in these countries, that are in these nations, if they would pray, Brothers and sisters, you want to get rid of coronavirus? All we got to do is pray and humble ourselves and seek the face of God. And God, he said, if we turn from our wicked ways, he will heal the land. And that's what he wanted Jeremiah to understand. He said, Jeremiah, just like that clay is in the hand of the potter, he says, so is America in my hands. And I want to say to you, America is in the hand of God. America is not in the hands of our president. America is not in the hands of our, of our senators and politicians. America is in the hands of God. And God said, Clay is in the hand of the potter. He said, Jeremiah, so are you, and we are in the potter's hand. God is our potter. We are the clay. Whatever we're going through, whatever we're dealing with, whatever we're suffering from, we are in the hand of the potter. And the Bible says that Jeremiah saw that that potter was using PPP. He was using pressure. He was using PPP. He was using pause. He was using PPP. He was using a push. See, the potter would sit down and he would mash down on this wheel and it would make the wheel turn fast. And as he would mash, as he would push on the wheel, the wheel would turn fast. And sometimes we need to be pushed in order to get something done. We need to be pushed to do what God want us to do. Sometimes our faith, it gets stagnant and God has to push us with a little trial and tribulation so we can get the job done. And I come to tell you, whoever you are, push! Don't you give up. If you about to have a baby, they would tell you, you got to push in order for the baby to come. And I tell you, your deliverance is on the way. Your blessing is on the way. Push forward. Don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. Push till you get your blessing. Keep on pray until something happens. Yeah. Push. And then Jeremiah saw not only was it PPP for push, but he saw that there was a pressure. 
that the potter would use. The pressure sometimes pressure would need to be used because as it's going, it need to go a little faster. He would put a little more pressure on it and see sometimes the pressure would make it go faster. And then there's some of us, we are moving a little too slow to get the job done. And God has to put fire upon our feet. God has to do like the eagle does the eaglets. When the eaglets get ready to fly, they are hesitant and too slow to get out the nest. So the eagle has to pull little stickers from the nest, little sharp points from the nest, so that every time the eagle would turn to the left, it get pointed by one of those, by the twigs in the, in the nest. It gets stuck and turned to the right. It would stick the eagle. And sometimes God has to allow stuff to stick to us, to make us uncomfortable so that we can turn it off, so that we can move forward, so that we can go and do what God wants us to do until we get tired of the sin and of the way things are going. He would have us to be pushed. He would apply a little pressure. And then the last thing of the PPP that Jeremiah noticed that the potter not only would use pressure, not only would he use Paul, would he use a little, not only would he use a little push, but he would use a little pause. Sometimes the wheel and the wheel would go so fast that the clay would be turning too fast and the potter has to pause to slow it down. See, some of us, we're moving too fast. We're not balanced. We're just going here and we're going there and we got to slow down. So if anything has slowed America down, coronavirus has put a pause. Now we got social distancing. It used to be we were too close, but now we got social distancing. It used to be we were learning too much in the room and far too close together. Now we're learning for instance, I come to tell you, God knows how to put us on pause. It used to be in the days of the children of Israel that every seventh year, the land would go on a pause and take a break from producing crop. But now we're just going and going and going, and God has put a pause on everything. And that's what we need. We need to slow down. We need to stop and put a pause on it and do what God want us to do and make a change. Now is the time. And he saw that, that if we just pause for a moment and look at the goodness of God and behold, like Jeremiah did, and see how God is working on the clay, then God will bless us. Jeremiah saw that. And then lastly, what Jeremiah saw that when the clay has had an encounter that messed it up, God can fix it. God can put the clay back together again. No matter what has happened in your life, God can fix it. He's a way maker. Out of no way, he's a heart fixer. Whatever is broken, he can put the pieces back together again. America, America, a country that shines America, a country who has on the back of its money in God we trust. And now America has in its own country Every religion you can find that has nothing to do with God, even satanic religion, is allowed in America. America, who started out built on God, has now taken the prayer classrooms. America, who started out in God we trust, uh, now you can even use God on the workplace. America needs to go on a pause and look at what we are doing. We need a change. We need a change in America and God can bring about the change. Whatever is happening in your life, God can fix it. He can change it. And I wanna end on with that and let you know that we serve a God who can fix 
the problem. The clay was marred, but the potter fixed it back together again. And he will fix your life again. You don't have to wait till tomorrow. He wants to do it today. Put off for tomorrow what God can do today. We're going to have Sister Bird come and sing this song. And while she's coming, if you want God to fix it for you, if you want God to change it for you, today, will you just lift your and say, Jesus, in my heart, change me, me, and help me. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen to the words of this song. Jesus said, here I stand, won't you please take my hand, and you said, I will, tomorrow, Jesus said, I am he who supplies all your needs, and you said, I know. But tomorrow, oh, tomorrow, I'll give my life tomorrow. I thought about today, but it's so much easier to say tomorrow. Who promised you tomorrow? Better choose the Lord today for tomorrow. Very well might be too late. Jesus said, Here I stand, and won't you please let me in? And you said, I will tomorrow. Jesus said, I am he who supplies all your needs. And you said, I know, Lord, but tomorrow, oh, tomorrow, I'll give my life. Tomorrow, I thought about today, but it's so much easier to say tomorrow, who promised you tomorrow, better choose the Lord today for tomorrow, very well might be too late. Still you laugh and play and continue on to say Tomorrow, forget about tomorrow Won't you give your life today Oh please, just don't turn and walk
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We want to thank God for the powerful message today. We praise God that His Word has brought us brought us up to heavenly places. We thank God that He has visited our homes. He wants to save us personally and the whole world. Only God can do that. We thank God that He can take us through these times with the message of hope that Pastor Bird preached and the song. The meditation and the appeal tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. People are dying daily. But today is a day we can submit all to God. And so if you join me in submitting all to God, won't you bow your heads with me? Father God, thank you for the message. Thank you for the powerful appeal of this message. Thank you for showing us our condition the condition of our nation, of our homes, of our congregation, of the world. We're glad that God will put us back together again, like the, God is the potter who can put everything back together again. You have already built for us a brand new world. You have a heaven that is sin-free, disease-free, eternal life that connects us to this heaven. You have a brand new world that you place us in. We are thankful that the power you have over death, the grave, demons, the devil, and hell is the same power that saves us, the same power that heals us, the same power that loves us. And so, Lord, as we're about to make up a decision for you, as we look on the screen and make a decision for you, receive our decisions. If you have accepted the Lord Jesus as your Savior from sin, because of the preaching of this word, I want to check the answers you see. Three simple questions. Check them in your heart. Check yes. Yes, yes, yes. Until next week, for the benediction, the word of the Lord says, Now unto him who is able to sanctify you completely, the great God, may this God preserve your body, soul, and spirit blameless unto the coming of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Peace be, peace be with you. Grace be with you. The love of God be with you. Happy Mother's Day week. Amen.